The artist, however faithful to his personal vision of reality, becomes the last champion of the individual mind and sensibility against an intrusive society and an officious state. The great artist is thus a solitary figure. In pursuing his perceptions of reality, he must often sail against the currents of his time. During the campaign, we, we, spoke, we spoke about making sure that we bring back arts to the city of Boston to make sure that arts is such a big part of our city. I'm still crashing on couches. Uh, uh, not much has changed, you know, in the last couple of weeks. Spring's around the corner, and I believe that, you know, I mean, with a new mayor, you know, there could be a renaissance on the horizon for, you know, just the arts in Boston in general. What's happening? We're back with Indignation on Dig Radio Boston. My name is Chris Ferrone. I'm the news and features editor of Dig Boston. I know for me, when I when I write a book, it's like shit. I just put all this work into that book. I don't want it to like disappear. You know what I mean? Like what what? But for a lot of artists, especially ones who aren't comfortable with the marketing side of things, I get it. But to sit around and complain that nothing moved, I mean, there, dude, there, I, we we have access to music services where you can literally access at pretty much any song ever written. Yeah. You know, you you got to do something special to direct eyes yeah. to you. If you look back in the history of Boston and the history of alternative media. In a way, a lot of it started here. You know, John and Sam Adams uh, literally wrote an alternative newspaper at the Green Dragon that helped spur the Boston Tea Party. You know, these days, having been in the media now for a while, without a doubt, a lot of what drives me is seeing shitty media <laughs> and, and wanting to either correct that or just to put something good out there. And, and To be the change you want to see? Yeah, exactly. Right, it was nice. Oh, I have to be peppy about the shit? Eat shit, Eric Anger. I'm a person. I'm not some fucking dancing monkey. Fuck you. I'm Mehran and fuck you. I resent this idea that you have to fucking struggle. I mean, it's, it's nonsensical. If you're doing what you love and it feels like a struggle, you're not doing the fuck you love. The dictator-elect of Iran said there's no such thing as an Iranian homo. No such thing. Which, first of all, makes me like a mythical creature. Which makes me like some kind of fantastic feathery unicorn. Or like a... Or like a, a gay. <laughs> the struggle would be, you know, working in a corporate environment again. And suffering bored fucking middle-aged housewives who are playing political games with me in a fucking office context. That's the fucking struggle. That's the quiet desperation. I, you know, myself, I never considered myself an artist, and I don't ever consider what I do as art. I just do what I do and, and try to have fun doing it. We're celebrating the 26th annual Boston Music Award, the longest running regional award show in the country. Do, do, do you like waiting? Do you like watching facing? Watching everyone play their parts? Watching all of them get so far? I've been in Boston public schools where they've had music classes in the boiler room. And Music Drives us has gone in and given instruments and got the kids out of the boiler room. We have uh, all sorts of programs that we've, that, that we've done and we are looking for your help. <laughs> music Drives us does a lot of things, but we're focusing now on keeping music in the schools. It's just so important with the budgets being cut, with everything being devastated in the schools, it's important for the kids to have music. Every study in the world shows they're more communicative, they play well with others, they want to go to school. They, there's a new study out that says they can learn a second language quicker if they've played music. It's, it's great. Hey, bring it How in. Are you? Good to see you. Thank you so much for inviting me. I mean, he, he's believed in me for the longest time. It's been very endearing. I mean, I am a struggling creative type. I am living on Eric's couch right now. And it's just been, I mean, he brought me back to the Boston Music Awards. Oh, I'm sorry. How's it going, Robbie? We're, we're trying to make, can I do one of these? How's it going? <laughs> 
Guys, we're oh, trying to do this as natural as oh, possible yeah. without any unusual sort oh, of no, antics. Let's be, let's be totally, totally natural. You know, Ernie's the closest thing in this town to like the Bill Murray character in Rushmore. You know, that guy that does believe in the dreams of bohemian creative types and, you know, is, you know, one of us. I, I, I definitely want Ernie to come down to Alston more if he's not going to, you know, if we're not going to fly together on the plane this winter, you know, I'd like Ernie, uh, if you can come down to Alston. I'm I used to live in Alston. Then come down. Me and Eric, we have Nintendo, we have a projection screen, we show planets, and we just sit back and we watch the planets for hours. Do you feel like you get pigeonholed as Ernie Bach Jr., the car salesman, and not Ernie Bach Jr., the well, person or the entrepreneur? Well, you know, I, I really don't give a fuck, so. Yeah. And it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I, I don't feel I'm pigeonholed at all. I just like to do what I do, and if people enjoy it, they enjoy it. If they don't, they can go fuck themselves. <laughs> Dropping the F-bomb twice in two sentences, and I haven't done it yet. I see little of more importance to the future of our country and our civilization than full recognition of the place of the artist. If art is to nourish the roots of our culture, society must set the artist free to follow his vision wherever it takes him. We must never forget that art is not a form of propaganda, it is a form of truth.